If you're considering moving to Charleston, South Carolina, but you're not sure which area you would like to live, this video is for you. I'm going to go over the surrounding cities and neighborhoods, beach towns, and more. Before we go over each suburb, let's briefly go over some things that you should know about the entire Charleston area. Charleston is the largest city in South Carolina and has a population of approximately 154,000 people. But the entire Charleston metro area has a population of around 830,000 people. The Charleston Peninsula is the heart of this location, and there are barrier islands and beach towns on both sides of the peninsula that we will go over soon. This area is known as the Tri-County area and includes Charleston County, Dorchester County, and Berkeley County. Charleston County has some of the most expensive real estate in South Carolina, but there are more affordable homes in Dorchester County and Berkeley County in cities like Monk's Corner, Somerville, Hanahan, and Goose Creek. There is a lot of water here, including the Atlantic Ocean, Charleston Harbor, where the first shots of the Civil War were fired at Fort Sumter, and we have many large rivers and creeks, making this a great place to live for boating, fishing, crabbing, or if you want to own a waterfront property. We also have two large lakes within a reasonable driving distance at Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie, and these lakes are great for fishing or camping. In the first part of this video, I will be going over the areas closer to the coast, so if you're interested in living near the water, the areas I will be going over in Charleston County may be best for you. But there are some options for waterfront property in Dorchester and Berkeley counties as well. There are many amazing parks in this area, including the Charleston County Parks, which has three different water parks that are great for the kids during the hot summer months. A lot of these parks also have a dog park, frisbee golf course, miles of walking trails, and some of them have a fishing and crabbing dock. I will go over these parks in more detail once we tour each location. Flooding can be an issue in Charleston, and there are certain areas that are more prone to flooding than others. You can go online and look at the FEMA flood zone maps to look at different flood zones. Flood zone X is the least likely to flood. South Carolina has some of the lowest real estate property taxes in the nation for a primary residence, and most of the counties here have a tax estimator website. I have a helpful relocation guide for this area with links to the tax estimator pages, flood zone information, median home prices for each area, and more helpful information about moving to Charleston. And you can click on the link in the description below or visit my website at garrisoncharleston.com if you'd like me to email you a copy of this free relocation guide. Interstate 26 is the main highway leading into Charleston, so if you want to live in one of the surrounding locations in a different county, like Somerville or Goose Creek, this will likely be your fastest route to get to downtown Charleston. Intrastate 526 is the other major highway here, and it forms a half circle around the Charleston area. It goes through West Ashley, North Charleston, Daniel Island, and Mount Pleasant. For travelers, Charleston has the busiest airport in South Carolina, at the Charleston International Airport located in North Charleston. For people in the military, this area has the Joint Base Charleston Air Force Base, the Naval Weapons Station, and on the Charleston Peninsula there is also a historic military college at the Citadel. Two of the most common questions that I get asked are, where are the areas with low crime and where are the best schools? As a licensed real estate agent, I'm not allowed to answer these questions since it can be considered steering, so you'll need to do some of your own research on crime and schools. A few good websites for this are greatschools.org, areavibes.com, and niche.com. And if you're looking at homes for sale on my website, it will show you some school ratings from greatschools.org towards the bottom of the page when you're looking at a specific property. The Charleston area also has a lot of great hospitals. The Charleston Peninsula has large hospitals located in the medical district, including the Medical University of South Carolina, or MUSC, Roper St. Francis Hospital, MUSC Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital, and the VA Medical Center. Trident Medical Center is another large hospital located in the Charleston area, in North Charleston. There are also many smaller hospitals in the surrounding cities and areas. So let's start the neighborhood tour, and we'll begin in the Charleston Peninsula. This is the historic area of Charleston and the site of the original Walled End City. At one point, Charleston had a drawbridge leading into the city. This is one of the most well-preserved historic districts in the country, where you will find many historic churches, the Charleston City Market, a lot of homes built in the 1700s and 1800s, and much more. This is a good area to live if you'd like to have a lot of great restaurants nearby and a lot of things to do within a short walking distance. Highway 17 is also referred to as Crosstown, and the peninsula is divided into two areas, north of Crosstown and south of Crosstown. The area north of Crosstown has more affordable real estate and newer homes when comparing it to south of Crosstown. Most of these homes were built in the 1900s. North of Crosstown also has Hampton Park, the largest park on the peninsula, Joe Riley Park, where the Charleston River Dogs minor league baseball team play their games, and the Citadel Military College. The area south of Crosstown is where you will find historic downtown Charleston, King Street, the College of Charleston, the historic churches, Colonial Lake, and the majority of historic buildings and neighborhoods in Charleston, including the French Quarter and South Abroad. 
When people think of Charleston, these are the neighborhoods that they are thinking of. This area also brings in the majority of the tourists to the Charleston area, so there will be a lot of foot traffic, vehicle traffic, and horse carriage tours. The beach towns also bring in a lot of tourists every year, so keep this in mind if you'd like to live somewhere near Charleston, but want to stay away from most of the tourists. If you're interested in moving to the Charleston Peninsula, I made a video tour of the entire area and all of the neighborhoods, and you can view this on my website or my YouTube channel. There are no beaches on the Charleston Peninsula, but there are multiple beaches nearby. It's close to about 20 minutes from downtown Charleston. The four public beaches near Charleston are Kiwa Beachwalker Park and Folly Beach to the south, and Sullivan's Island and Isle of Palms to the north. A lot of people that contact me want to live near the beach, but not necessarily in a beach town. So let's go over a few areas that are within a close driving distance to the beach, and we will start on the north side of Charleston in Mount Pleasant. I will then go over all the beach towns a little later in the video. Mount Pleasant is a very popular historic area that people are moving to that is located across the Cooper River over the Arthur Ravenel Bridge. It is the fourth largest city in South Carolina with a population of about 95,000 people. Once you get into Mount Pleasant, the main roads are Highway 17, Coleman Boulevard, and Interstate 526 in southern Mount Pleasant. This part of Mount Pleasant is where you will find more established neighborhoods like the historic Old Village, Ion, and is the location of Shem Creek, a great place to get some seafood. Once you get into North Mount Pleasant, another main road is Highway 41, which will eventually take you over the Wando River. There are a lot of communities out this direction as well, including Dunes West, a popular gated and golf community. Mount Pleasant continues to build out towards the north, and this is where you will find the majority of the new construction homes. Properties in North Mount Pleasant are typically more affordable than in South Mount Pleasant, but you will be farther away from Charleston. Mount Pleasant is also home to the USS Yorktown at Patriots Point, Memorial Waterfront Park near the bridge, and Boone Hall Plantation, where my family loves to go to the pumpkin patch every year for Halloween. Mount Pleasant also has a very nice 943-acre park at Palmetto Islands County Park, which has a fishing and crabbing dock, dog park, kayak launch, and a playground for the kids. This is a great park to bring your family. It also has the Splash Island Water Park, a fun place to visit during the summer. There are a lot of golf courses in Mount Pleasant, including Patriots Point Links near Charleston Harbor, Charleston National, Dunes West, and more. There are multiple master plan communities in Mount Pleasant with great amenities. It also has numerous places to go shopping, restaurants, retail stores, the Mount Pleasant Town Center, and grocery stores in the area. There are a lot of things to do around here, so you won't need to leave Mount Pleasant for much. If you move here, you will be near two beaches at Sullivan's Island and Isle of Palms. You can take Ben Sawyer Boulevard to get to Sullivan's Island and the Isle of Palms connector to get down to Isle of Palms from Mount Pleasant. One of the biggest cons about Mount Pleasant is the cost of living with home prices and rent being more expensive than the next few areas we're about to look at. All right, let's go over to the other side of the Charleston Peninsula to the suburb of West Ashley. It is called this because it is west of the Ashley River. West Ashley is actually within Charleston city limits. Like Mount Pleasant, there are more established and older homes on the side that is closer to Charleston and newer homes the further away you get. But this area is more affordable than Mount Pleasant. The area that is closer to Charleston is sometimes referred to as Inside 526, since it is inside the interstate, and the area further away is known as Outside 526. West Ashley is the location where the city of Charleston began in 1670, located at Charlestown Landing. The settlers would move to the Charleston Peninsula about a decade later to what is now the historic district of Charleston. West Ashley is also the location of a few different historic plantations, including Middleton Place, Drayton Hall, and Magnolia Plantations and Gardens, all located along the Ashley River. Highway 17 goes through West Ashley, and I-526 also runs through this area. Other major roads in West Ashley are Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and Highway 61. On Sam Ritten Boulevard, you will find a lot of commercial stores, grocery stores, and retail shops. This road will eventually cross the Ashley River, and you can get to I-26 from here. You will find the historic plantations along Highway 61, and this road will eventually lead you into Somerville. West Ashley is bordered by the Ashley River, Stoner River, and Wapu Creek, so there are a lot of waterfront communities located here. There are several miles of biking and walking trails, some paved, at the West Ashley Greenway and the West Ashley Bikeway. The Shadow Moss Golf Course is also located in West Ashley. There is a 260-acre city park called West Ashley Park with a playground, athletic fields, basketball court, baseball fields, a fishing area, and disc golf course. There is also the Stoner River County Park before you cross over into Johns Island, and this is an 85-acre park with great marsh views, trails, and a boardwalk that leads to an island in the Stoner River. The area that some people refer to as the downtown of West Ashley is called Avondale, 
and there are some good restaurants, shops, and bars located here. You will be able to get to downtown Charleston very quickly from this side of West Ashley as well. The entire West Ashley area also has a lot of shops, restaurants, retail stores, grocery stores, a Costco, and the Citadel Mall. If you keep going down Savannah Highway past West Ashley, there are some rural towns out this direction, including Ravenel and Hollywood. This may be a good location for you if you're looking for a home with acreage. West Ashley is a good option for people that want to live near the Charleston Peninsula and have a beach within a reasonable driving distance. You will have Folly Beach and Kiwa Beachwalker Park on this side of Charleston, but you will need to drive through either Johns Island or James Island to get to these beaches. So let's go over these areas that are a little closer to the beach towns. James Island. This is a good option for people that would like to live near Charleston, but want to be closer to the beach than West Ashley, and it is more affordable than Mount Pleasant. You could take the James Island connector and be in downtown Charleston very quickly, and James Island is also close to Folly Beach. Folly Road is one of the main roads that will take you into West Ashley or down to Folly Beach, and Maybank Highway will take you over to Johns Island. On the northern end of James Island, you will find Wapu Creek, McLeod Plantation Historic Site, and the Country Club of Charleston, which hosted the 2019 U.S. Women's Open Golf Tournament. The only other golf course on James Island is also up in this area along Maybank Highway, which is the City of Charleston Municipal Golf Course, and is open to the public. On the eastern end of James Island, you have the Melton Peter Dimitri Park, and a great view of Charleston Harbor. The western end has James Island County Park, and this is my favorite county park around Charleston. This location has an RV park for camping, a climbing wall, challenge course, disc golf course, fishing and crabbing dock, a huge dog park, and the Splash Zone Water Park. This is also where they do the Holiday Festival of Lights every year, and this is a great place to bring the family during Christmas time. The majority of homes on James Island are a little older, and there are not a lot of newer homes. Most of the homes were built in the 1960s or 70s. James Island has a lot of restaurants and retail stores along Folly Road, and a Walmart Supercenter. On the southern end of the island, there is also a Harris Teeter grocery store, and a unique place to eat seafood at Bowen's Island Restaurant. There are quite a few commercial shops on the island, so you won't need to leave the island for much. Let's move over to Johns Island, which is a very large island, and is actually one of the largest islands on the east coast. This is a much more rural island than James Island, and you can find some large pieces of land and horse farms here. There has been a lot of development recently, especially in the northern part near Maybank Highway and River Road. There have been a variety of restaurants and businesses moving into this area, and a lot of new construction communities as well. If you're up in the northern area, it won't take you long to get into Charleston, but you may need to leave the island to either West Ashley or James Island for a lot of your shopping needs. For example, if you need to go to a Walmart or Home Depot. The southern end of the island is very rural, and if you move to this area, you will have a much longer drive to get to Charleston. Johns Island is also bordered by Wadmala Island, another very rural island, where you will find the Charleston Tea Garden. Johns Island is the home of the famous Angel Oak Tree, which is estimated to be about four to 500 years old, and is a must-see if you're in the Charleston area. There is also a 738-acre park here at Johns Island County Park, with a disc golf course, an equestrian center, and trails, and an archery range. The southern end of Johns Island borders Kiwa Island and Seabrook Island, and Kiwa Beachwalker Park. This is my favorite place to visit the beach near Charleston. So now let's go over the beach towns in the Charleston area. But first, I want to talk briefly about some things you should consider if you want to move to one of these beach towns. These towns drive in a lot of tourists every year, and most of them only have one bridge to get on and off the island. During the summer months, which is the busiest time of the year for tourists, these roads can be very backed up, and it may take you over an hour to get on and off the island if you're just trying to do a quick trip to the grocery store. The backside of these islands will have a river, and this may be a better option for you if you'd like a waterfront property or if you just want to have less tourists near your home. It is also possible to find a property with a dock on the river, and there are numerous marinas in these areas with boat slips available. The beach towns have condos and single family homes for sale and rent, and most of them also have fractional ownership vacation homes available. This may be a good option for you if you're planning on vacationing near Charleston for part of the year, and I will put a link for fractional ownership homes and beach homes for sale below. Charleston has three resort-style gated and golf communities in this area, located at Wild Dunes on Isle of Palms, Kiwa Island, and Seabrook Island. Kiwa Island and Seabrook Island are two separate communities, but they are in the same area on this side of Johns Island. This is an amazing area if you want to live near a resort-style community with a lot of golf courses nearby. Kiwa Island is a much larger island than Seabrook, and has about 11 miles of beaches, five golf courses open to the public, two private golf courses, 
and is the location of the Ocean Course, where Phil Mickelson became the oldest player to win a major at the 2021 PGA Championship. Seabrook has about 3.5 miles of beaches and does not have a public beach access site. Seabrook has two golf courses and has a lot of amenities including a lake house, tennis courts, oceanfront pools, fishing dock, great dining, and an equestrian center that offers horseback riding along the beach. Since you need to cross John's Island, you are going to be more secluded on these islands. It takes a while to get to Charleston from here, and it's about a 45 minute drive to downtown Charleston. And there are not a lot of amenities on the southern end of John's Island. There is a location between Seabrook Island and Kiwa Island, known as Freshfields Village, where there is a Harris Teeter grocery store, some restaurants and shops. There is also the Bohicket Marina in this area. Let's move over to Folly Beach, which is the closest beach to downtown Charleston. Folly Beach is a public beach and is a fun little town with a lot to do nearby. There is a pier which is great for fishing, many souvenir shops, restaurants, surf shops, and bars in the downtown area, all within a short walking distance to the beach. There is also a county park on the southern end of Folly Beach, and on the north side you can view the Morris Island Lighthouse, which was built in 1876. The lighthouse was originally built on land, but is now offshore due to erosion. Folly Beach has no large grocery stores, but it does have a market open 24-7 located at Burt's Market. There is a Harris Teeter grocery store nearby on James Island, but it may take you a while to get there during tourist season. There are no golf courses on the island, and the closest is on James Island. Alright, let's go to the north of Charleston again, to the two beach towns near Mount Pleasant. Solomon's Island is a very nice little beach town, and has the most expensive real estate for sale out of all the beach towns. It is a small island and only has about two and a half miles of beaches, but the beaches here are great. My favorite place to visit the beach in Sullivan's Island is near Fort Moultrie, which played a pivotal role in the Revolutionary War. South Carolina got its nickname as the Palmetto State due to the battle here against the British. At the time, the fort was constructed out of palmetto logs when the British fleet attacked. The palmetto logs absorbed much of the cannonball blasts and the Americans repelled the attack. There are no golf courses on Sullivan's Island and no large grocery stores. Sullivan's Island does have a lot of good restaurants on the island, including Poe's Tavern, given the name because Edgar Allan Poe once lived on Sullivan's Island, stationed at Fort Moultrie. Sullivan's Island also has a preserved maritime forest, a lighthouse, no hotels, and has less commercial property than many of the other beach towns. Over the bridge from Sullivan's Island is Isle of Palms, which has much more commercial property than Sullivan's Island. This beach town has a great little downtown area with a lot of restaurants, shops, live music at the Windjammer, and has a county park, so Isle of Palms draws in a lot of tourists every year. Similar to Folly Beach, Isle of Palms has a lot to do within a close walking distance to the beach. This island also has a large grocery store at Harris Teeter, which is great if you don't want to leave the island. There are two golf courses in Isle of Palms, located in the gated resort-style community known as Wild Dunes, on the northeastern side of Isle of Palms. This is a great beach community with a lot of amenities, a marina, hotels and restaurants, and beachfront property available. One of the best things about Wild Dunes, when comparing it to the other resort-style communities located at Seabrook Island and Kiwa Island, is a close proximity to amenities. Wild Dunes is located closer to downtown Charleston than the other two, but also has Mount Pleasant nearby. So you will be closer to shopping and some other amenities than on Kiwa and Seabrook. Alright, that was all the beach towns, so let's move up further away from the coast to Daniel Island. This is a very unique and beautiful master plan community in Charleston, and you won't find any other neighborhoods like it in this area. Daniel Island is situated in between the Cooper River and Wando River, and it offers residents stunning waterfront views, many miles of trails, a marina, golf courses, recreation center, and has several parks in the area, including Governor's Park and the waterfront area, which has a community dock, fountain, and the Daniel Island Ferry, which will take you to downtown Charleston. There is also the Daniel Island Club, which has two beautiful private golf courses, resort-style pools, tennis courts, a cabana bar by the pool, and many other amenities for its members. Daniel Island also has the Credit One Stadium, which hosts many concerts and events, and the Credit One Charleston Open, which is a professional women's tennis tournament. You can get to Daniel Island from I-526 from North Charleston or from Mount Pleasant. Clements Ferry Road will also take you to the Wando area, and there has been a lot of development out this direction. This road will eventually connect to 41, which crosses the Wanda River into Mount Pleasant, North Charleston. This city covers a large area and is the third largest city in South Carolina with a population of around 119,000. There are parts of it in Charleston County, Dorchester County, and Berkeley County. The city is bordered by the Cooper River to the east and the Ashley River to the west. North Charleston borders the Charleston Peninsula on the southern side and Somerville, Hanahan, and Goose Creek further to the north. The main roads and highways are I-526, 
Interstate 26, Rivers Avenue, then on this side is Dorchester Road that has a lot of communities along the Ashley River. These waterfront communities are typically more affordable on this side of the Ashley River than across the river in West Ashley. There are homes with a private dock located here and some neighborhoods with a community dock. Dorchester Road will eventually lead into Somerville. North Charleston is the location of the Charleston International Airport. There are a lot of places to shop in the city including Northwoods Mall and Tanger Outlets. Close to Tanger Outlets is the North Charleston Coliseum and Performing Arts Center where they do a lot of concerts and events, and this is where the Stingray hockey team plays their games. The downtown area of North Charleston is known as Park Circle, and there are a lot of good restaurants in this area. There is also a park located here with picnic tables, baseball fields, a disc golf course, and they just finished a huge playground for the kids. Along the Cooper River, there is also Riverfront Park. This park has a great water view, and there is also a memorial for the Charleston Navy base, with some historic homes once occupied by naval officers. Further to the north is another great park called Wanamaker County Park. This is a large 1,015 acre park that has miles of trails, multiple picnic areas, boat and bike rentals, volleyball courts, a dog park, a disc golf course, playgrounds, and a large play hill for the kids. There are really no hills in Charleston, so this is unique for the area. Wanamaker County Park also has the Whirlin' Waters Adventure Park, a great place to bring the family during the hot summer months. There are a couple colleges in North Charleston at Charleston Southern University and Trident Technical College. Trident Hospital is also up in this area, near the interstate. Somerville This is a very popular city that people are moving to in the Charleston area, and the homes for sale in Somerville are much more affordable than in Charleston. There are many new construction master plan communities with great amenities, but there is also a historic district with beautiful older homes. Somerville has a nice little downtown area with bars and restaurants, boutique shops, and the world's largest sweet tea. The city is actually known as the birthplace of sweet tea, which is very popular in the south. Somerville covers a very large area, and some of the main roads that go through here are I-26, Highway 61, which leads down into West Ashley, Dorchester Road, or 642, that leads into North Charleston, Alternate Highway 17, also called 17A, which runs through the downtown area of Somerville and will also lead you out to Monk's Corner, and Highway 78. On the other side of Somerville is Highway 176, and this is where you'll find Cane Bay Plantation. Nexton is also in this area, and these are two very popular master plan communities. Nexton Parkway goes all the way from 176 back to I-26, and there are a lot of new construction homes here. Highway 176 also has a Publix grocery store, some restaurants, a Roper Berkeley Hospital, and if you drive down into Goose Creek, there is a Walmart Supercenter. There are some great restaurants out in this area, including Hall's Chop House and Taco Boy, located at Nexon Square off of 17A. There are three public golf courses in Somerville, at Legend Oaks, the Club at Pine Forest, and at Westcott. There are also three YMCAs, plenty of grocery stores and amenities, and a small section that sits along the Ashley River. Some parks in Somerville include Azalea Park, Historic Fort Dorchester State Park, and Ashley River Park. This is a great park with playgrounds, picnic areas, a splash pad, fishing pond, a dog park, and riverside walking trails. Somerville also hosts the Flower Town Festival every spring, which is a great festival to attend with arts and crafts and good food. There is a small town bordering Somerville in this area called Ladson. This little town is right in between North Charleston, Somerville, and Goose Creek. There is not a lot of amenities in this town since it is small, but there are a lot of amenities and places to shop nearby in other areas. Highway 78 and I-26 are the main highways in Latson, which makes it a convenient location if you want to travel. To the east of North Charleston is a small city called Hanahan. This is also another convenient location if you want to be able to get into Charleston quickly. Hanahan also has the Goose Creek Reservoir, which is about the closest thing to a large lake that you're going to find in the immediate Charleston area. We do have two large lakes within driving distance to Charleston at Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie, but it's about a 45 minute to 90 minute drive to these lakes from Charleston, depending on which part of the lake that you visit. Goose Creek is much closer. Hanahan also has a very nice recreational center and park with baseball fields, a playground, amphitheater, dock, and a boat ramp leading into Goose Creek, so it's a popular location for boating and fishing. So let's move up into the city of Goose Creek, which is also located in Berkeley County. The main roads in Goose Creek are Highway 52 and Highway 176, and this is where you'll find most of the commercial properties, restaurants, and shops. 176 is the road we talked about earlier that leads to Cane Bay in Somerville. The east side of Goose Creek borders the Cooper River, and this is where you'll find the Naval Weapons Station. Goose Creek has a lot of well-established neighborhoods, and one of the large neighborhoods is Crowfield Plantation. 
This subdivision has a small lake, a public golf course, and other amenities. There are a lot of older ranch style homes in Goose Creek, but there are also some new construction homes available as well. Central Creek Park is a great place to bring your family. It has volleyball courts, basketball courts, a Splash Creek play area for kids, pickleball courts, and a very nice playground. I like to bring my toddler here because it is fenced in and there's a lot of fun stuff for him to do. Goose Creek has seen a lot of growth recently, and this has been another popular area for people that want to live in the Charleston area at a more affordable price. Last on my list is Monk's Corner, and this town is located just past Goose Creek on Highway 52, and it is on the other side of Somerville on Highway 17A. Monk's Corner covers a large area, and the city is all the way up near Lake Moultrie. Monk's Corner borders the Cooper River to the east, and there are some waterfront properties available out this direction, at a much more affordable price than in Charleston. There are also a lot of homes for sale with acreage in this area, if you're looking for some land. If you would like to live closer to a large lake, Monk's Corner may be a good option for you. Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie both have a lot of fishing spots and campgrounds, and are a great place to go boating. Cypress Gardens is also located in Monk's Corner, and this is one of my favorite locations to visit in the Charleston area. You can take a relaxing swamp boat ride here, see some alligators, and it is also the location where some movie scenes have been filmed, including scenes from The Notebook, The Patriot, Swamp Thing, and Cold Mountain. The town of Monk's Corner is relatively small, and there are not a lot of amenities out this far, but there is a Walmart, some restaurants, a few grocery stores, among other things, and it is not that far from other cities. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions about moving to this area, feel free to contact me anytime. You can call or text me at 843-769-1836 or email me at markgarrisonrealestate at gmail.com. You can also scan this QR code for my contact information.